What's up everyone, it's Eurosol here, and this is going to be a relatively quick video here looking at the data surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic spread. Without going into all of the many different threads that I've talked about previously regarding the history of the virus and all that kind of stuff, you can look at some of my previous posts on that to uh, find out some of the data that I'm talking about in those videos about why the mainstream narrative is highly flawed, let's say. I'm just going to look at the data here, really, without getting too controversial, uh, just because I'm hearing many, many people commenting on the so-called mortality rate globally of this virus, and I'm hearing really wildly different figures. And generally speaking, people are also admitting, well, I don't, I'm not really very good at maths, but then they're going out and telling the whole world, hey, it's this. So I just want to show you, based on this data, which is taken from World Health Organization, CDC, and all these other different sources, and aggregated on this website, um, what the mortality rate is according to this data. Now, I'll be the first one to admit that World Health Organization, CDC, are not trustworthy, and I've made, written, made many posts, uh, videos and posts on that subject in the past, and, you know, if there was a better source of data, I would be using it. But I don't, at the moment, have one, so uh, this is all I have to go on. Uh, and as far as I know, that's the same for everyone else as well, so not quite sure where all these different various figures are coming from. But I'm going to look into the mortality rate and also uh, look down some of the different countries in here uh, and look at the the growth of the of the spread of the virus, the graphs, and see what we can figure out based on what's on here. So, first of all, I've got my calculator open here. Just drag it on. So, so we take the total number of confirmed cases, which is five seven six eight five nine. Divide that by one hundred, which gives us the value of one percent of the total. And if we then divide that value into the total number of deaths, that will give us the percentage of deaths relative to the total number of confirmed cases, which is the mortality rate. So 26,455 divided by 5768.59 gives us 4.58%. So roughly 4.5% mortality rate globally. That's according to this data. So no, it's not 1%. No, it's not 15%. It's 4.5%. And we're going to have a look now at some of the other countries specifically and see how their mortality rates compare and how the graph and, and growth rates compare and what we can deduce from that. So if we look at the US, we can see that there were hardly any cases reported running right up to um, the end of the first week of March, actually. And then it's it's just gone exponential almost to the point where uh, they're actually now the the highest number of the US has the highest number of cases anywhere of any country. Now that's debatable, but we'll get onto why that is in a moment. So if we look at Italy now, we can see that they the growth of their number of cases has taken a longer period than America or the US, and although their number of cases are quite similar in total. Now, the interesting thing here is China, which for most of the time period I've been looking at this, which is several months, I've been looking at these graphs, China was understandably the highest because that's where it originated. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation and some evidence and testimony from people in China saying that the data being put out by the Chinese government is doctored, it's incorrect, and it's basically trying to make this blemish on their record seem less... Uh, terrifying perhaps than it may be in reality uh, so in other words people are saying that I mean there's a recording for example of a woman uh, a journalist phoned up, phoned up a I think it was a, a mortuary in China and pretended to be a government agent and managed to get this person to explain what was really going on and they were basically freaking out and saying they're having a nervous breakdown because they were just constantly burning bodies all day long um, and this was before it actually even really got um, you know the, the numbers really went through the roof in China so I think there's a reasonable chance that the, this graph that we're looking at here in the bottom, bottom right for China isn't really accurate. Um, and we can see that it actually starts um, about halfway through January. And yet the first case was reported, as I understand it, in the early December. And it's likely that there were cases before that as well. So I feel like the chances are that, that this graph, which shows basically a growth from almost nothing up to uh, the peak level, round about 75, 80,000 um, in the middle of February. so. Basically, you're talking about a one-month period uh, to go from minimum to maximum, roughly. I feel like that's not really true. I feel like the total number is probably higher and also took longer to get there. 
Um, but since people have been assessing the likely spread of the virus in other countries based on China initially, this is quite important to, to sort of look at because estimates for other countries could be wildly wrong or, or not. So if we look at USA again, um, we can see that this has shot straight up in the space of less than a month and it's gone higher. So why would the US basically have such a rapid spread of the virus uh, as compared to China if, well, for a start, if it's spread uh, through just general breathing and coughing and things like that? I don't really, I'm not aware of any particular cultural differences that would cause it to be worse in America. Maybe these details will come out, but uh, I think it's more likely that in actuality the Chinese data is inaccurate. And if that's the case, then uh, the fact that it's shot up so exponentially quickly in America is quite alarming in the sense that um, there's a good chance it's got quite a way to go before it levels off. There is also the issue of testing. These are the, you know, how, how many people are being tested. Obviously, you can't have a confirmed case unless testing is being carried out. And obviously, as time goes by, testing will be done more commonly. And they weren't, apparently, there weren't tests available in China to begin with. So there's also that factor involved, which means that really we can't reliably use the Chinese data as a way to predict other countries' experience. However, people are still doing that uh, because, you know, on a certain level, it makes sense to do that. Uh, so if we look at Italy, again, this, uh, if we start down at here, 27th of February, roughly, going on to the, it's about one month period again. It's taken to go from the lowest to the current peak, the current high point, and it's not slowed down yet. So if we go back to China, just to refresh the memory, first, 22nd of the 1st, to here is about one month. So basically, if this data from China is accurate, then we should be seeing US and Italy slowing down round about, or at least Italy uh, slowing down round about now. The US should take a couple more weeks, which means that the US could end up with a quarter of a million cases or more. But that's assuming that the Chinese data is accurate and so on. Um, so if we now look at the mortality rate from this data in China, how does it compare to the global average? So we've got 81,897 divided by 100. And then we've got 3296 deaths divided by 818.97. So China has a mortality rate according to this data of 4%, which seems unlikely given that they were uh, the first to experience it, the least prepared in the sense that they didn't have any warning, and for them to be lower than the average mortality for the world seems to me unlikely, regardless of their social policies or anything to do with you know politics and so on. Just the fact that they were, should have been worse hit by it since they had it first means that I'd be very surprised if that data was accurate. Um, so if we now go to the US, do the same thing. 94238 divided by 100 and then 1438. 1438 divided by 942.38. 1.5% mortality for the US. Now given that they've only really been dealing with this for half the time period of the other places, uh, and people obviously would take some time to die if they did actually have this disease, then um, I don't think that 1.5% is a measure of US health success. I think it is probably going to increase in the next couple of weeks, but we'll see. Um, now, if we look at Italy, eighty six. 498 divided by 100, and then 9134 divided by 864.98. So Italy has a mortality rate of 10.5% according to this data. And then one of the main reasons why the 
the overall mortality rate is as high as it is. Um, the reasoning for that, I, uh, so far I've heard two justifications, or three, three potential causes for why Italy has been um, taking this so brutally. One is that apparently the lockdown that the government put in place was only applying to some of the worst hit areas, which meant that people ran away from those areas and then spread the virus to the rest of the country. Um, that's one issue. The other is they have a culture of body contact. I think, it's my, my understanding anyway, more so than a lot of places, so hugging, kissing, that kind of thing, just generally accepted. Same as Iran, also very badly hit. Uh, but, you know, that's just speculation. I don't know for sure that that's really what's causing this. Um, there is a good video that's put out by Mick the Vegan, which I'll link under my video here, which shows something that I noticed myself, but didn't really have the data to do proper research into. Um, he's a public health specialist. And basically he showed that the, the worst hit places seem to follow a kind of central band across the, across the equator, roughly, the central band of the planet, this line going across horizontally here. And... You know, that means that they share a certain degree of similar weather. And obviously weather does affect viruses and viral spreads and health and so on. Um, but he was asking some important questions, such as why is this uh, India not showing such uh, bad um, spread of the, the virus, even though it's right next to China, if it was just a horizontal band. But what we actually found is that there's uh, when, when you map humidity out across the world, then it actually doesn't go across at the moment in a straight line it kind of goes up and around and up like that um so he showed how there's a reasonable chance the line actually does of humidity of gradation actually does reflect the uh, worst hit areas uh, so that's something to bear in mind um so if we look now at spain oops, six four oh five nine divided by 100, and then 4934 divided by 640.59. So Spain is on 7.7 .7 mortality rate. So we don't have the mortality rate mapped out on this uh, system. It would be interesting to have that added on here. But um, the bottom line, I think, here is that we still have a lot to learn about what's really going on. But if we look at Spain's growth, um, this is less than a month for them to, to reach that level. So I think it's important that we, we pay attention to this data. And it does look to me quite a lot like um, we can't trust the Chinese data. And so all of the rest of these countries still haven't peaked. You know, there is a reasonable chance that they're going to actually experience something a lot worse than they have been so far. And I don't want to frighten anyone. I'm sure nothing I'm saying here is really frightening anyone more than what a lot of the people have, you know, been saying and, you know, causing people to get freaked out already over the last few weeks. But uh, for most of this, I've been kind of expecting, based on the Chinese data, to some extent, these cases to start tailing out pretty quickly and it for it not to be this massive prolonged problem for months and months and months that people have been predicting. Uh, but until, from my perspective, until we see some of these other countries starting to go horizontal, uh, it, it's very hard to predict. In Mexico, 585 confirmed cases, 8 deaths. Now, that could be because they aren't testing. I don't really know. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I think it, we need to have extra data on this map to really understand what's going on. We need to know how many people are, are being tested, how effective the tests are. I've had many people saying that the tests are producing a huge number of false positives. And they just aren't really all that accurate. So, yeah, that's it, really. I, I mean, I could talk all day about this and go off on all the different tangents that are available regarding, you know, the engineering of it in laboratories and uh, the financial situation that's been generated as a response to it and all of the different um, events leading up to this, like the Bill Gates and Melinda, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's simulation of a coronavirus pandemic just a few weeks before this happened. Uh, you know, there's red flag after red flag after red flag, but that's something for another another day, another video. I've already touched on that already. Just wanted to talk about the data here. If you have anything to add, any extra data sources that I'm not taking into consideration here, then definitely do let me know in the comments and uh, I'll take a look at that. And if you've got any relevant info to add as well, then definitely I'll, I'll be interested to hear that too. So until next time, thanks for listening. Uh, do take care of yourself. Make sure you're getting plenty of 
fruits and veg as usual as you should be anyway if you want to be healthy uh sunlight you know exercise deep breathing self-love self-acceptance these things are all best practices for health regardless of what's happening in the world and uh, you know really it shouldn't take a an existential threat like this to um or fear of an existential threat to to motivate people to be healthy but in any case please do consider these things you know they're mostly free or very cheap and they can make a world of difference to you and everyone else so uh, I wish you well in all of that and thanks for watching. So until next time, peace.